things to the black economy because they predict that artificial intelligence in the very within 10 years is going to eliminate 40% of entry level positions. That will affect the black community and brown community the most because we actually hold 70% of those positions. Um, wow. At the Black Unicorn Factory, I try to enlighten us on how to be ahead of technology but not trying to outwork it or outthink it, but to be its boss. And that's why I wrote my own book called Tech Boss, because I believe that we should actually benefit from technology and that, that technology should not eliminate us from the future economy which is coming. And the Silicon Valley's uh, response to uh, um, our, you know, our future is universal basic income. They feel that the technology is going to eliminate uh, most of the positions and we're going to be basically obsolete and therefore we should just give you a stimulus check and set you to the side uh, that's not going to be the narrative if uh, if i uh, have my vision to come true and i teach black tech as a as the medium to build black wealth and uh, that's pretty much it but it, it is it is vitally important that we do not uh, allow technology to flourish without us benefiting from technology financially. Mr. Glass. And we can actually do that. Mr. Glass, Stewart says that uh, we should be benefiting from tech. Are we, black people, benefiting from the technology world? I see a lot of um, entrepreneurs you know, participating in tech, and I think it's growing. The same numbers that you're seeing in Silicon Valley, the billions of dollars that are being put into some of these startups, but, you know, we're starting to, you know, become more aware of these opportunities like this that'll continue to spread the word so you know that it's not something that's intimidating that you can actually get into and bring your creativity to uh, start to level the playing field. So we got a long way to go, but I think uh, we, we have a good start. Uh, and about like way out tomorrow. Josh Marlin says we gotta uh, uh, get in on the on the ground floor, but <laughs> the ground floor is way way beneath us, isn't it? Like, isn't it too late to get in on the ground floor of technology? Oh, look, look! I mean, this is a great time to get started. I mean, you know, despite the pandemic, um, people being at home more. Also, I think means that people have an opportunity to learn more skills. And I taught myself how to code um, a few years ago. I didn't know anything about coding um, prior to that or was even really interested in coding. I uh, got scammed when I tried to pay someone to do an app for me. And when uh, that didn't work. Um, Ooh, I, I did too. I did too. Oh, oh okay. yeah, I'm sure. We're probably yeah, not I did. And, and I just gave up. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, well, like you, I mean, I, I uh, was dedicating kind of most of my life to this app idea. So when I got scammed out of my money, um, I was really frustrated with that. I'm like, look, man, like, I wish I could just build a damn thing myself. At that time, to me, it sounded like I was saying I wanted to build a rocket ship because it seemed like impossible. But I just sort of forced myself to learn. And um, a few years later, um, I, I worked with Facebook and um, I've done a ton of work with big major artists. And I think that if I, honestly, if, if I can do it, I think anyone can start learning how to code and create things. And even if you're not creative enough to create something from scratch, having these skills will at least prepare you for the future for work. So you might be able to create something for someone else that um, they might, uh, and I did it. Well, coding doesn't seem to be an easy Others. task. How long did it take you to learn how to code? Uh, well, that's a good question. I, I'd say like probably like maybe like five years. Um, that's a long time. That's that's longer than it takes to get a college education, Josh. So yeah, so <laughs> the reason why I hesitated to answer is because although it took me five years to learn how to code. Um, it only took one year for me to code something uh, as a proof of concept to mm -hmm. then make money. So ah. I made money after a year of yeah. something sort of basic enough that can make money. Um, but learning how to code and understanding how to create algorithms and artificial intelligence took a little bit longer. Um, so, you know, um, I'd say now is it, it's not too late. Um, and, and some might argue that we're actually just getting started. Um, so, yeah. 
So the ground floor it is. The ground floor it is. Um, but yeah, when you put it in into financial perspectives, and you say it took you a year to start making money off of, of an, an app, off off of an app that you coded, but then it took you a total of five years. Look, you can spend four years in college and 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 have another three years just looking for a job. So when you put it in perspective financially, it does sound like a very short time uh, to have learned to do that. Why does the racial inequality that exists in most industries also exist in the tech world? Why is it, why? Look, I'm 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 a woman, so I automatically start thinking about hair weave, and I'm like, black women can never get in on the hair weave business and we are the ones that use it the most but we can't get it to sell they won't buy it to us to sell or to to make a, a profit off of it and so when i think of businesses or opportunities that black people can't get involved in i go straight to my head literally um but the tech world is also it's very difficult for black people to get in or is it go ahead Stuart. Oh, okay, I didn't know if you heard me. The uh, the the tech uh, uh, field, we don't realize sometimes the disparity that's in the tech field. You'll find that if you research enough, you'll find that uh, we are not actually uh, uh, represented. As you'll find a couple of several years ago, that Silicon Valley doesn't represent us, and that that representation goes even into access to capital. We're the one. Uh, we're only 1% out of the uh, uh, receiving in terms of funding from uh, investors. Wow. Uh, we hardly ever, ever receive any funding from uh, as far as the tech company is concerned. This is why at the Black Unicorn Factory, we've had to actually use an alternative, an alternative to raising capital other than going to the traditional, which is to ask the establishment, the traditional of uh, uh, wealthy investors for money because when it comes to black businesses black tech businesses you're only getting one percent of all the capital that they have available and there's no shortage of money it's just that the they don't want to get money to black giving people? it to us is, is interesting is no it's not interesting it sounds more of the same to be honest they don't want to give us money to buy a house they don't give us want to give us money to start a business of course they don't want to give us money to get into the tech world uh you say you use alternative methods though like go fund me yes. well if president obama passed an alternative uh way to raise capital for businesses which was in 2012 he uh signed into law uh, an act, a bill called the Jobs Act, and it was an alternative route to actually take a company to the, to the Wall Street stock market. We've tried, they had tried for years to get banks to treat us fairly and tried to get investors to be kind to us, and the, the narrative hasn't changed. It's still 1% of all their money goes to black businesses. Well, in 2012, when they passed the, the Jobs Act, President Obama gave us a new track to Wall Street. And that uh, uh, is a, what they call a micro IPO process. We didn't. We still, up until this time now, don't even know that the law was passed. We don't know that in that law, the seventh chapter of the law said tell minorities. And even though there's 36 books on the on the market right now on Amazon that talk about a crowdfund equity crowdfunding, not crowdfunding equity, uh -huh. that. Not one of the books ever mentions the seventh part of the law, which is to tell us. And it says tell minorities and women. And you'll wonder why that uh, Silicon Beach out here in California walks and talks and everyone is talking about the process of the Jobs Act and utilizing it, but the black community knew nothing about it for all these years. This is the point that I come in because I want us to know that this was a an alternative method of raising capital that was designed for us, those who are at the bottom of the economic echelon, to be able to get capital because of the disparity and the unfairness in, in, in trying to help black businesses grow. And uh, uh, that's what our vision is, is there, is to take companies using this new process the President Obama passed the law that most of us have no idea he even did that. Well, we're going to continue to talk about ideas we had no, uh, we, uh, uh, no we had no ideas of uh, when we return on the Tammy McLeod show on Fox Soul. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Those of you that have been following the brand for a long time, you know that we've been waiting to be on TV, and here we are. Fox Soul presents Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. If there was 100 million right now, would you fight again? I can get 100 million easy. Got a light flex? That was a hard flex. <laughs> there wasn't no hard flex, it was a real flex. Every Friday. I truly believe that you guys can go to the top. Appreciate you. I receive all of that, because your energy is, yes, I receive Stop all of that. Boy. I'm not. Bye. I just like his energy. <laughs> How you want to lock? What else can I say? You guys got the keys. Here are your AARP top tips on caregiver preparedness during coronavirus. First, form a caregiving team. Create a list of people in your family and friend network who can help with caregiving tasks. Take an inventory of supplies in your loved one's home. Try to have a two-week supply of essential items. Make a list of the care recipient's medications and medical contacts. Be sure to have prescriptions on hand and ask the pharmacist for an extra 30-day supply. Make a plan to stay connected. To prevent social isolation, set up available technology to help loved ones stay connected and schedule regular chats. Finally, maintain your own self-care. Follow the Centers for Disease Control's guidelines for coronavirus safety and have a backup plan for care in case you become ill. For more caregiving tips during the coronavirus pandemic, go to aarp.org slash caregiving. Back to the Tammy Mac Late Show on Fox Soul. Tonight we're talking about the tech world and where do black people stand when it comes to being a part of that world. And if you want more content like this, it's easy. It's so simple. All you have to do is log on to foxhole.tv, or you can download the Foxhole app, or you can go to Fox Now, Fire TV, Roku, Tubi, Zumo. We are on Apple TV, and we're also on caffeine.tv. And if you so choose, you can talk to us because we are live. Yes, this is live and in living color, honey. All you have to do is watch us on YouTube, and you can actually chat. We chat back. Marlon, uh, you say the lack of a STEM foundation for all kids is the most severe long-term threat outside of pandemics. For people who may not know, uh, explain what STEM is and why that's so important in the African-American community. So uh, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And, and more than just the discrete subjects, it's a way of thinking. Um, often involved in STEM subjects, you have uh, project-based learning, master-based learning. Uh, and those are opportunities where kids can get in, roll their sleeves up, and do something until they get it done. Not for a grade, but for mastery. And so we, you know, when you talk about the uh, blacks or people of color in in uh, in tech, there are two sides of the equation. There's there's talent, the lack of talent. Right now, we have uh, 400,000 computer science jobs across the country that we're not able to fill, and we still have our brothers and sisters that are struggling. Let's teach them some coding and programming, right? Uh, advanced manufacturing, that's changing because of STEM. We're going to have 2.4 million jobs over the next 10 years that we're going to have to fill. Um, and these are all tech jobs. These are all tech jobs. Without a STEM foundation, you do not participate. Uh, data science and data analytics, all tech jobs. And so the, the problem is systemic. It's that our, our, our black and brown communities aren't getting the opportunities. And I, I'll say rural communities, too aren't getting the opportunities to teach our children STEM from early. See, our, our children are, are thinking that STEM is for the other guys, you know, uh, with that disposition for the sciences and mathematics. But it's not. It's access. It's just access. And we got to get it to them early. Around the fourth grade is when uh, our, our kids are starting to think about who they are, what they can and cannot do. Let's get it to them before that so it becomes a part of how they think about the world. And when they do that, if we do this thing right, by the time they, they graduate from high school, they should have four legitimate options. They should go on to college because they found something that they, they want to sink their teeth into, and they're going to study it. Uh, by the way, the college dropout rate is 40%, so we want to get kids who are ready to go to college and want to go to college to go to college. But then we have to have legitimate options for them to go into work, not just to, to go to work at McDonald's. And I'll say a thing about McDonald's in a minute. But, but there, there are jobs out there. I just told you 400,000 jobs that are paying fifty to $100,000 a year fresh out of high school if you if you have that out of high school oh absolutely oh absolutely i was in a school district talking to a um a, a job a counselor and there's this one you know you know that student that 
wasn't going to amount to anything. This yeah. student was coding at night, making $70,000 a year as a senior in high school. These opportunities are out there. And this is a global, when you talk about global, cybersecurity is huge. Right now, there, we're projecting that there's going to be a 4 million job gap globally for cybersecurity. So if we can get on the talent development side, uh, our kids involved in STEM beyond the programming and the, and, the, and the robotics, but a deep and a wide comprehensive experience of STEM, where they develop these 21st century skills and, and they're calling the four C's, critical thinking, communication, creativity, and collaboration. If we can get that underneath them, then they can fly. When they, when they fly like that, when we flood the marketplace with talent like that, it, you see, the lack of funding, uh, we don't get funded uh, because it's a good old boys network and ain't enough of us in the good old boys network to say, yup, I'm gonna take a chance on this brother because I've seen brothers and sisters like him before. Yeah. And so when we start to flood the marketplace with talent, on the other side of the funding, there are gonna be more of us on there to say, yup, that's a good idea. I don't care what you look like, where you come from or what you're saying, other than you vetted the idea and it's a good one. So, so we have to address this thing systemically. We have to start an education. Uh, we have to give our school systems help because it's not, gonna, it's not happening there and it's not gonna happen there. I mean, I, I will tell you that I'm having conversations with school districts and it's like the first time they're hearing about uh, comprehensive STEM and the need for kids to start early. So yeah, that's to, horrible. That's hor that's horrible. It's 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 really it's interesting because y you know I'll say that technology it's almost like the technology uh, started to to evolve at such a rapid pace that it caught us off guard, right? So I'm going to cut some slack, but our businesses have to get involved. Our communities have to get involved. This is this we are at a time where for the very first time it truly does take a a, a village to raise a 21st century child. And when you so, talk about uh, I I, I want to make something clear real quick to so that we can get an understanding when you talk about cybersecurity and that there are going to be all of these jobs in cybersecurity what specifically what does that mean what is cybersecurity so, like are so we talking about are we talking about the ring or are we talking about vivid like what when you say cybersecurity so we're becoming more virtual uh we uh we're existing in the cloud and there are bad actors out there who want to go in and penetrate and, and, uh, and get your data so, like, we have a, a physical security force. We need a cybersecurity force. Ah, and got it. Okay. Mobile. See, I thought you were talking about the security I have at my home, the Vivint that I have at my home. That's cybersecurity. But you mean literally se the security of the cyber world. That's exactly the security of your data in your companies and your systems. Yeah, got it, got it. So mm -hmm. I want to I want to move over to Alton real quick because you're a filmmaker, Alton, and. Um, when I think of what Marlon's talking about, when he talks about uh, how the STEM program is very necessary and how starting early is necessary and we need people in the math and, and, and that type of thing, it makes me think of Boys in the Hood. When Furious Styles is talking to Trey and all of his friends and he says to them, you, what you wanna do is make sure you know your mathematics because mathematics is not subjective. And they can't they they can't trap you or trick you if you know math because it is what it is, and so it sounds like this is the kind of things that we need to be teaching our um, our children today. We need to be teaching them, you know, this, this, these STEM programs. We need to get them involved in. Uh, but it seems like black people really just want to be talent when it comes to the cyber world and when it comes to social media. Like we don't want to be behind the scenes. We want to be in front of the camera. I, I, how do you feel about that? Do you agree or am I out of line right there? Uh, I think that students have to understand that, that even if they don't want to start a business, they need to think like a business. So if you do want to work in front of the camera, you still need to understand how to operate as a business or an entrepreneur, right? So it's very important to, to understand how to leverage the technology and these resources uh, to build. I think entrepreneurship is one that is uh, never too early to teach. And I think that's where we often may fall short when it comes to uh, looking at STEM. I think it should be also about STEM entrepreneurship so that we can build these leaders to go out and build these businesses because if you're just teaching the job, we're still not building economics for ourselves as a community, right? And I think that's gonna be very, very important. And I think art is a very big opportunity as a conduit to technology, right? You get them excited, you leverage their, their, their natural innate talents, and then you make tech, bring the barrier down and make it so that it's digestible. And I think art is a very great uh, uh, opportunity for you to still leverage both and all your gifts and become a creative technologist. Yeah, you actually 
did that yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. Can you give us your story a little bit so we can understand why you got involved in tech in the first place? Yeah, so, uh, uh, like, like uh, Johnny and uh, Marlon were talking about, Ron is directing film and television. And I started to see a very big shift in, you know, streaming and, and uh, the bottleneck in, um, you, you see platforms like Netflix and Apple, right? And, and you're, you're trying to figure out well, what's, what's going to be next. Now, I started off making films, and now you have influencers making movies and short films on IG, right? So understanding, well, how do you continue to stay adaptable in the changing times and technology? So then I had an opportunity to check out virtual reality. And it really, really blew my mind, and it, and it really took me back to my childhood. I'm like, wow, if I can go into this virtual world and build and create, um, it, it became more of a philosophy for me. Um, how I can come out and create new reality for myself and hand these tools off to young people who can now start doing what they call world building. And I think it's really important for them and myself. It taught me how to own reality. And as a storyteller, I think that everything starts with your DNA, your deep narrative analysis. And that's what made me think about applying technology to storytelling. Because even the app is nothing without a story. It's nothing without engaging at the heart. It's still a storyteller, no matter what you do with the technology, uh, as a storyteller or as a coder or as an engineer. And that's what drew me into uh, transitioning from just a director into how can I leverage my, my skills as a storyteller into these emerging technologies and, and now moving that into games and all these other opportunities. So that's, that's, that was how I transitioned into it. So, Josh, in 2016, you launched Persona with co-founder uh, Christina Million. Persona is an artificial intelligence company that builds chatbots for celebrities. So how did that idea come up, and how did you get a celebrity involved in that? Uh, it started off as a hobby. Um, I was always interested in artificial intelligence and trying to figure out ways to create just cool stuff. Um, I have a daughter, she's 12, and um, one day I decided to create a chatbot of Selena Gomez, who she likes a lot, um, or liked a lot. She likes someone new every week. <laughs> of course. Um, and I created a chatbot of Selena Gomez for her, and I wanted to see how she would engage with this chatbot, um, just out of curiosity and to see if, hey, if, if maybe others would be interested in that too. Um, and she couldn't stop using it after she first tried it. And that sparked the idea of like, oh, well, what if music artists really did have chatbots to communicate with their fans? Um, and long story short, um, I was friends with Christina Milian. I told her about the idea. We made one of her. Um, and basically the way her chatbot works is fans can chat with her 24 seven, ask, uh, different questions like are you single or when is your next song coming out um anything that we program into it and on her end it's a powerful tool because when she has a new song coming out or any artist yeah you can publish or they can send a message to all these fans all at once through their chatbot kind of like email marketing um but through social media without the algorithms in the way or without the news feed in the way or without paying for ads and so um when I realized the business opportunity for chatbots, um, that's when I started pitching that idea uh, to music artists. And um, from there on, we made chatbots for Snoop Dogg and, and Katy Perry well, um, and a bunch of others. And it's been working well since. Well, my chatbot says that we have to go to a break right now, but we'll come right back on the Tammy McLeod Show on Fox Soul. Oh, y'all better get prepared, because I know you're going to drop some gems, man. Fox Soul presents... You was doing what rappers was trying to do back then. Like, you had to change the souls. Worth the conversation with Jeezy. You know, all the glitz and the glamour. That's right. Prime. Prime does what he does, so he can insulate Dion. Huh? Every Wednesday... It's so cold. Prime and Dion are two different people. They're yeah, two different entities. I love it. He's giving you a headache. Prime pays the bills, man. I ain't got no head. Oh, shit. <laughs> 
this is the message. This is a message for all the true fighters. To all the true fighters. True warriors. The true warriors. The true champions. We know that every battle comes at a price. You see it on our faces. It won't you see it on yours. It won't give you a headache if you close the bathroom door. So to the doctors, to the nurses, to the first responders, for your bruised faces, for your battle scars, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for asking for battle. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for going toe to toe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your courage and your sacrifice. All of us. 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 All of us are in your corner. What to expect when you're expecting? Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. I'm ready for their mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> Show. Welcome back to the Tammy Mike Late Show on Fox Soul. We're talking about the black community and their involvement or lack of in the tech world. And Stuart is about to bust at the seams over there in that chair. He's like a child in church that just want to go see the candy lady. <laughs> what has got you all uptight over there, Stuart? Let's talk. Well, behind the, uh, the discussion of tech, I'd like to say something about let's take a look at what we're uh, what is really going on. We're not truly benefiting from the ideas. Many of these people that are out there in the world today are idea poachers. They're looking for talent. They're looking for your ideas. They know that if you learn stem cell uh, sciences and things like that, that's, they got, you know, we got people in India that walk and talk technology all day long. But what they lack is what America's greatest asset is, our ideas. Every, if everyone is in a culture the same, they have a tendency to think the same. That's why China, people, a lot of people in predominantly in China, they think like Chinese, Indian, think like Indian. In America, we have a melting pot of ideas. We are the idea makers of the world. These gentlemen here, they've all shown that they can come up with ideas that make money. The world is trying to poach these men's ideas. What we've done is, we're taking jobs that that develop that deliver million and billion dollar ideas to others whereas they give us thousands and we're happy but at the same time they make billions off of your idea and we think oh that was a good exchange that wasn't whenever you receive thousands while somebody else took your idea and made a billion dollars off of it you're going to have a bad feeling about the whole thing we have to uh, benefit by taking our technology to the levels that they're taking. This is why when we opened the show today, you mentioned all those men who are wealthy today because they took other people's technology that they didn't even create, and they made billion-dollar businesses out of them. We have uh, to do this the This conversation thing. comes up on the show pretty frequently, and I always have to say, yes, you take someone's idea, and then you make them, or someone takes some, the white man take the black man idea, uh -huh. and then makes it a billion dollar business yes but doesn't the black man hold some type of responsibility in selling his idea or not believing in himself that he could be the one to create billions from that uh, Tech or that even that he sold out his own uh, idea technology uh, tammy is one of the uh, most uh, disruptive industries to be in because Every time that you create technology, there's someone else waiting for you to make it great, and then there's someone waiting out there to one-up you. Technology is, is, is changing so often that when you come up with a good idea today, the idea poachers that are out there are looking professional idea stealers. And they're here not to, uh, to, to because of the stem cell and the sciences. They're here for your ideas. We are Our greatest asset in America is our ideas. And these ideas make everyone in the world come here 
to hear these ideas. But what I'm asking is, isn't it our fault that we sell out our own ideas? Isn't that our fault? We don't. Yes, because we don't know the value of our idea. When someone tells you take, you know, $70,000 for a billion dollar idea, we thought that that was winning to be paid that. When actually he's thinking this is a billion dollar idea and this guy doesn't even know it. We and which, we're not trained to understand how to which, take an idea and turn it into a billion dollar company. Which oftentimes happens in the music industry. Uh, mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle just talked about it on uh, uh my next guest needs no introduction on Dave, the David Letterman show. He talked about how uh, how these platforms that he did the Chappelle show on are still making money off of him, and he's not making any money from those shows. And he said uh, his great grandfather would probably say to him, "You you getting sold, bought and sold more than I was as a slave." So um, I I go back to the talent portion, because that takes me right back to the talent portion. And it seems that black people want to be the talent more than they want to be the people who are behind that talent, uh, creating the platforms and create and, and creating these billion dollar businesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marlon, what do you have to say about, I mean, I'm, black people are known to be great athletes, great rappers. We're now great Instagram influencers. It's easier. It's sexier. Uh, we make money like that. So why would we want to do something like uh, uh, coding or something that requires manual labor when we can just smile in front of the camera and make a thousand dollars while somebody else makes a hundred thousand off of our thousand dollar idea, Marlon? Well, so, look, uh, it's not just black people that want to be the talent. All people want to be the talent if you want the spotlight, right? But behind that talent is a system that promotes uh, that talent. And that system is really where the opportunities are. Look, the, the talents are few. There is only one Michael Jordan. The Bill Gates, he'll tell you that he got lucky. And, and the story goes on and on and on. But what these folks have to, that, that built them up were talent behind them. So what we really have to do is address the, the systemic lack of participation of black and brown people in technology. And it starts from day one. How do we get more of our kids involved in technology early so that, you know, the bell curve is real, right? Only a few of us are going to be company owners. I don't care how you spin it. You know, there's some, there's some people, you can put them in the middle of the desert and they'll, they're going to, you know, innovate their way out. Some of us are just, just going to die because we can't figure out how to get out of the desert, right? That's always going to be the case. But what we need, the rest so, of But Marlon, is- black people going to always figure out how to get out the desert. We've been in the desert since we've been in America. And that's the point that I'm making, right? <laughs> so, so you put a system around them so that they can leverage this creativity. But black people have been in it. We built this country, right? We know this because we can figure out how to do things. And so we put the right sort of education and foundation underneath us. We are going to excel in technology. Um, technology is going to start to build itself. So we have to get our folks. Look, people are talking about coding. Pretty soon we're going to have, Josh, you know this, artificial intelligence is going to code itself, right? So that's, <laughs> that's going to be a dying skill. Exactly. And so if we don't get ourselves in so we can evolve with the, the, the technology, we're in trouble. So, so at, at 21 Cent Ed, we're a virtual STEM and CTE academy. We can't wait for our school systems to figure out how to get our folks involved in STEM. So we're going to ask our parents to participate, uh, get our kids enrolled. We have 46 different STEM courses versus the two or three that education is offering. We're going to ask our businesses to participate so that we can start to train folks in our black and brown, have them code, have them in AI, have them in robotics, have them in all of these, have them in entrepreneurship so that when they develop this talent, they can leverage it and think with that business mind so they do, so that they, they can become a, that, a part of that 2.5% that's going to rule the tech world. And that it, we have to think about this systemically. How do we move this thing? From the ground up. Josh? I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? It, it cut off. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just giving you a chance to weigh in on what Marlon's saying. Um, well, look, I, to, to comment on what you mentioned about artificial intelligence, essentially going to be able to write itself um, and create its own software. I, I think that's absolutely true. Um, I do think, though, that people have to start somewhere and they, they want to sort of gradually become interested in tech um, because, um, as Tammy mentioned, I mean, a lot of us are interested in entertainment and being in front of the camera. And I think baby steps into technology, at least um, starting with coding or building a website 
or web design um, can influence other ideas that they might have or even other interests uh, they, may, they may 